Salvi. Baby. Deep left field. He's done it again. 25 RBIs. And by the way, this is game number 26. May not have been much of a game thanks to the rain, but hey, the Royals are back in the win column, winning their third straight over the Toronto Blue Jays and ending the homestand on a positive note. Welcome to the Royals recap. My name is Jake Milham. I am one half of the Royals Rundown podcast. Thank you very much for joining me today on a on an abbreviated Royals recap, if you will. We only got five innings of action today in Kauffman Stadium, and then we got a rain delay that lasted for three hours and 38 minutes and just I, I couldn't imagine they were they were doing great on the radio broadcast trying to kill some time but uh, it was it, it should have been called a long time ago this is just the 14th game in franchise history for the Royals that has lasted only five innings and the first since July 18th, 2005 back in Cleveland but unlike that game the Royals uh, exited today with a win, winning 2-1 to one in a low-scoring affair. Cole Reagans gets his first win of the 2024 season, so congratulations. He allowed just one run in five innings of action, marking the third time this year he's allowed one run or fewer. And his ERA currently sits at 3.9, so it is trending in the right direction. We absolutely love to see it. He faced just two batters over the minimum in the first three innings and retired four of those batters via strikeouts. He did have a a rough fourth inning, to say the least. Three straight batters reached with one out, including a double, a walk, and an RBI from Ernie Clement. But he stranded the tying run at third base, and that is all that matters. Pitched 76 innings pitches and only 46 for strikeouts so not a not a great control game from reagan's he also had three walks in today's game not not banner but he he only allowed one run so that is that is gonna play for me salvador perez he uh he was the main man in the royals lineup today he put the royals on board in the first inning with a two-run home run improving to 837 career rbis which matches mike sweeney for the fifth most rbi all time in royals history now he trails frank white and his 886 career rbi for the fourth most plus Salvi is still quietly having a uh, an MVP caliber season at the plate. Seventh home run of the season, which is tied for third in the American League and is 25 RBI already in the season, leads the AL and is second in MLB overall. He's currently riding an on-base streak of 15 games, reaching base safely every game since April 9th, which is really nice. And he's just two games shy of matching his career high. We will have to see if he can continue that streak in Detroit against the Detroit Tigers. But like I said, the Royals, they have won three straight games on the heels of their three-game skid improving to 16 and 10 to match their fourth best 26 game start in club history behind only the 2003 squad 1989 and 2015 squad they finished the homestand four and three and have posted winning records in four of their last five homestands since september 15th of last season going 19 and 7 in those home games so listen this was not this was not the not the game that that we all wanted to see. This wasn't the you know blowout, get the third win over the AL East Blue Jays, but this was a win nonetheless. Keeps the Royals trending in in the right direction, and you move on to Detroit, get out of town, and see what you could do on the road. So coming up on the other side of the ad break, we will hear from Will Klein, who did not make his MLB debut today, but he got the call to the show today. So we'll hear from him, and then plus we'll hear from manager Matt Quatrero following the uh, the actual end of the game. So stay tuned. Church called me at 10.30 p.m. last night. Uh, uh, he called me uh, and 
He just goes, you're going to Kansas City? I was like, you serious? He goes, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, I mean, like, I don't, like, it didn't feel real at the time. Like, I felt like I had to, like, go, you know, pack up my life, go, go figure out how to get a rental car, get out here. Like, it was kind of a whirlwind. And then on the drive, I was kind of like, it was, like, setting in. I was like, oh, my God, like, you know, four years in minors. And then every, like, day before that kind of leads up to this point. And so it was, it was kind of just like, wow, like, and then now you keep going. Like, the reality of it is just, like, you know, you're coming here to do a job. Like, as much as, like, that call is, is great, it was, it was exciting. Like, you know, the dream comes true, but now you get here and you got to go perform and, and do your job again. So kind of got to take the moment a little bit this morning. But, you know, now it's it's just back to baseball. Yeah, I mean, the forecast was pretty accurate that we we're going to get about 90 minutes to play or 90 minutes until the heavier rain came. It came, the lighter rain came a little earlier than we might have thought. Um, but 2.30ish, it started raining pretty good. The field couldn't really take much more. So the decision to tarp it, you know, we tried to get through that. We did get through that fifth inning. It was raining pretty hard. Um, then they thought about 4.30, 4.45, it would stop, which it did. But at that point, Trevor and the guys, they spent about an hour trying to get the field playable. And in the opinion of my opinion, but also the one that matters, the umpire, it was soft. And it was especially soft at short and third because that's the side they didn't get to. So really it was just a matter of now are we going to put guys out there on a field that we don't deem to be playable or safely playable with the possibility of more rain coming in the next 45 to an hour. You know, we played a full five. What you didn't want is like, okay, we get one more inning, and now what's what's the difference there? So we had all those conversations, and it was just kept going around between the league and us, the league and the Blue Jays, all of us together, the umpires. So ultimately, you know, that's why you have a crew chief, Guccione. He's been doing this a long time. He thought the field was unplayable, not unplayable, but un not safe. Um, and that's what ultimately led to the cancellation. No, the tra this is an easy trip. I mean, this is an hour trip. It, the, that had nothing to do with it. It's just when you get to a point where, in my eyes, you're having the same conversation multiple times. It's, it, you know, our, my opinion, John Schneider's opinion, they listen to us, but it, that's why you have an unbiased third party that makes the decision because clearly I would want to play if I was them and I don't want to put our guys in an unsafe position, but if you're losing that game, you really want to play, right? I mean, so that's what was getting frustrating to me was just like, all right, let's make the decision one way or the other. Tell us to get out there and play or tell us to, to go home. All right, y'all, that is going to do it for today's Royals recap. A little bit of a unusual schedule this weekend in Detroit. First pitch tomorrow is at 12.10 Kauffman Standard Time, so a little bit of an early game. Seth Lugo is going to be taking the mound for the Royals against Reese Olsen of the Detroit Tigers. Should be a good one up north. Make sure to follow along on Valley Sports Kansas City, MLB Network, and 610 Sports Radio. But my name is Jake Milham. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And until next time, go Royals.